Anthony, Heather, I've got to tell you right now, things have calmed down earlier today, though we see, did see a lot of demonstrators out there in front of the Glen County Courthouse. Just to give you a feel of what's going on, you have a lot of people in this area saying that they really want things to remain peaceful here at the Glen County Courthouse. I can tell you out here earlier this morning, we did see an officer in our particular area with a dog. I asked him what they were doing. He says that dog was a bomb sniffing dog. So security is out here. They are trying to make sure again that things remain peaceful. And we actually caught up with a group of clergymen earlier today praying out there for people and singing as well. Take a listen. We're coming together that they just sort of set a tone of peace. We want to set that tone that it carries out throughout the week that everything that happens here um, is peaceful as we seek justice. Many of us are hopeful. Um, the process has been going in a direction that I think the community has wanted and been asking for. Uh, I think there was responsiveness when the community began to gather last year. And I think that hope is still carrying into this week. And now uh, part of what we're about is just being peacemakers and keeping a sense of unity as we navigate what comes in the, the next few weeks. Now, the group tells me they will be out here throughout the duration of this trial. It's about 50 or so uh, clergymen all throughout Glynn County, pretty much unifying to try to make sure that things remain peaceful here. They're doing their part in doing so. Now, earlier today, we did see Wanda Cooper Jones as well as Marcus Arbery. That is Ahmaud Arbery's mother and father. Here is what Wanda Cooper Jones had to say about all of this on day one of jury selection. Take a listen. Amal's purpose was to bring change. I mean, since we lost Amal, we've had some changes here in the state of Georgia. And I often think that I lost Amal, but it's, it's a bittersweet moment because we lost him, but we also brought, brought change to, to the state of Georgia. Her son, her 25-year-old son, he lost his life, but he has brought about change, really not just in the state of Georgia, but far beyond. Let's take a look now at two of the three men that are on trial here for murder in the death of Ahmad Arbery. We are talking about both Travis and Gregory McMichael, father and son. First, we'll take a look at Gregory McMichael. We know he's a former Glynn County police officer and former investigator for now indicted DA Jackie Johnson. Now, Gregory McMichael was stripped of his law enforcement certification for failing to complete use of force training. McMichael says that his son, quote, had no choice but to shoot Arbery. Now let's take a look at Travis McMichael, what we know about him. He is a former Coast Guard petty officer, third class. Now, he shot Arbery, we're told, three times using a shotgun. Police say he had previously reported his pistol stolen from his unlocked vehicle, and he suspected that Arbery was involved. We want to check in now with Kaylee Tracy. She was actually inside of the courthouse this morning when things really got underway. She had a chance to listen in as the jury selection process began. Let's check in with her now over there right in front of the Glen County Courthouse. Kaylee. Yeah, Keith, the first group of 20 potential jurors, they were inside the courthouse today just wrapping up now the questioning from both the defense and the state in this whole process. Now, just for perspective, 1,000 people here in Glynn County were summoned for jury duty, potential jurors in this case. That's roughly one in 85 residents. The first 600 were brought to Selden Park Gym today. That's not too far from here for an initial hardship vetting before they narrowed down those first 20 to come again around 1 p.m. here to the courthouse. Those potential jurors facing questions that were still being hammered out this morning, including whether they think the Confederate flag is a racist symbol, a question the judge said he will allow the defense attorneys to ask. The judge is not allowing the defense to ask potential jurors if they're concerned about their safety or livelihoods if they're picked for the case the judge saying that could potentially rule out everyone we did talk to arbery's family today outside the courthouse about their outlook for the trial we're ready it's been a long road to get here um we've prayed we've cried we've been happy we've been sad and we've just been pushing and fighting and so now that we're here we're ready just to go ahead face what we need to face and get things over with. 
And that was Ahmad's aunt who you just heard from. We also spoke with Ahmad Arbery's father. You'll he hear more from him tonight at 6. And we do want to mention you may, if you've been watching the live feed, see the audio on that feed cut out a few times. We're told that is to protect the potential jurors and their privacy. And we'll keep you updated, of course, of everything going on here in Brunswick. But for now, reporting live, Kaylee Tracy, First Coast News on your side. Back to you, Keitha. Thanks for that, Kaylee. And again, we are told that the jury selection process could last up to two weeks. As for the trial itself, according to the state today, we found out it could continue up until November 16th. Folks, we will be out here. First Coast News covering this gavel to gavel this trial for you both on air and online, of course, at firstcoastnews.com and always on our First Coast News app. For now, live in Brunswick, I'm Keith Nelson. First Coast News on your side. Back to you, Heather.